Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Deha. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pi Maroni Pico Scroll. I picked this up at a retailer, probably about the only re remaining retailer in the United States that still sells uh, electronic components like this with a brick and mortar store. Uh, but this is the unit. There's their price tag. Um, it's a scrolling uh, all white LED display, 7 by 17, 17 uh, columns and 7 rows. And then you get four buttons on it as well. Now the thing to get used to right away is with its name, scroll. It can do static graphics, but static text, uh, unfortunately, I just couldn't get it to work in any way, shape, or form. It's probably something simple. Maybe one of you viewers have done it. Uh, please share how you did that. Uh, but other than that, anytime I use text, it's going to be scrolling, which nonetheless is still great. Uh, this is the device itself. It's all it consists of, a very small circuit board and a whole bunch of bright white surface-mounted LEDs. Now getting it all assembled is really quite simple and that's part of the reason why I won't be doing a fritzing diagram. Uh, here's my Pico. Uh, in this case it's not the Pico W. Uh, they, on their device, Pico Scroll, they show you which end is the USB end. So there's my USB. I already got my header soldered on so I just put the two together like so. Squish it down like that. And then from this point on in the video, the, the Pico will be hidden. I'm going to put the whole assembly here in a vise so that it uh, stays where I put it, because Picos are so little and light that just hooking in the cable in an awkward position wants to spin it around and make it do things uh, that I don't want to. So to keep it on camera, we're putting it right here. I'm going to plug it in, just like you would with any other Pico. Now I've got a demo program here uh, that I'm going to run, but before we do that, I think it is extremely important uh, that you get everything set up right on the Pico first. Now we're going to pop into a website here. This is their website, and you're going to go there because you need a little bit of information from them. And uh, the the uh, files that we load in, the UF two files don't contain the dryer drivers to run this LCD display or LED display. And uh, Pi Maroni creates their own. So if you go to this page where it talks about the Pico Scroll Pack, scroll down and it'll tell you where to get your custom MicroPython UF2 file. And that would be this page here. It's on their GitHub. And then you're going to select the version that fits your Pico or essentially one of the newer ones. Uh, you might have to try a couple before you get it to work right. Uh, I think I goofed up and loaded in a Pico W because I was experimenting with those the other day. Um, but uh, get the right one. Uh, load it in just as you would set up any other uh, Pico loading in that file. So once I got it all loaded in, I just started poking around and wrote up a small demo. I think we should run the demo first, uh, then come back and explain it. And I'll explain how this is all working. Luckily, it's quite simple. Now to help with this, I'm using a, a dark gray uh, gel. This is a... Uh, um, these are gels that are used in photography often for filters and colors. And I got a whole bunch of different colored ones. And uh, if I just run uh, the display with the LEDs directly exposed, uh, this camera here will uh, kind of bright out on us, get the hot spot, and you won't see much. Uh, but this makes it a little bit more uh, visually appealing. So that's just a hint also. You may want to incorporate something like this in your projects. So I'm uh, going to go ahead, run it. You'll see some lines being drawn and a very long welcome message. Uh, and I'll take this away momentarily so you understand why I'm using the gel. In the real world without the camera, it's actually quite visible. 
uh, but this gel, frosted or dark gray gel, really helps make it better. Uh, then here we'll come up to the next segment, uh, which requires us to test the buttons. So we're going to press the A button, the B button, X button, and then finally the Y button. That'll reset it, a snowflake will come down, and then a, a ending message. So it's all around a very cool, fun little project or device that can add a lot of fun uh, to your projects. Again, I want to mention it's for scrolling text. That's its primary feature. Uh, but it does have the ability to, uh, uh, to provide you with the facility to turn on and off individual pixels. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the demo program, uh, which will give us a basis for ex explaining how this little guy works. Um, some of the very basic functions that are in here uh, that I've created in this little library is to give us a way to draw an, a line along x-axis. We can draw a line along y-axis or a vertical line. Uh, plotting a pixel, and that will plot the pixel even if it's off screen, uh, where the standard plot pixel will uh, give you an alarm if you're trying to print it out of the bounds of the uh, screen. And then uh, the move snowflake is kind of a routine to help animate that snowflake falling off the, the screen or scrolling down the screen. Uh, the main code section below all the, the subroutines plots some lines, fills the screen with a gradient fill. That was kind of hard to notice uh, when we ran it. Uh, the, like I say, these LEDs are very bright, so it, it's hard to uh, differentiate uh, whether they're slightly dim or very bright. Uh, there's a button press example, so you can learn how to fun work with the buttons. Uh, we'll animate a falling snowflake. Uh, which could be a way of animating little objects so they can create a game utilizing your buttons. And then finally, it ends with a message using another, uh, scrolling another text message. Moving down to the actual code, um, after I cleaned it up a bit here, um, we're going to import the time module just so we got a way of doing some pauses. And then we're going to import Pico scroll as scroll. And this is what comes prepackaged inside that uh, UF2 file that we got from Pi Maroney. First thing we'll do is we're going to query uh, and get uh, the width and the height, which we technically already know. It's 7 by 17, 17 wide, 7 uh, high. Then I created these little functions here. Um, just to make it easy to draw a line, because there is no line line drawing routine in uh, this library. So, uh, very, very simple. We're going to draw a line from start to end at this Y coordinate and at this uh, brightness intensity, which ranges from 0 to 255. 0 being off, 255 being bright. Uh, we'll set up a range for x between start and end, and then we'll increment through x uh, at each one of those x positions. And when it's running, it will uh, do the set pixel, turning it on at the intensity we specify here at this x location and this y location. The x location is coming from uh, right here, which came from uh, this variable, which came from range. And then you always do a scroll update to refresh the display. Otherwise, it'll never display anything. So you got to remember that particular uh, code segment. So when you pass this function in the data to draw a line, it will magically execute the drawing of a line. This is the same routine for y-axis or vertical lines, just moving along y at an x position. The plot pixel routine uh, is really quite simple. The only reason why I added this one in over the basic scroll dot set pixel routine uh, is that if you specify an x or y coordinate that is out of bounds between 0 to 7 vertically and 0 to 17 horizontally, 
the uh, program will crash with an error. So to avoid that, I just included a, a error trapping with a try to do that, and if it fails, just ignore it and go on. Uh, which then allowed me to very simply create uh, uh, an animated snowflake by going through a while loop here uh, that will increment by one uh, pixel position. We're starting above the screen at minus two, and then we're going to plot and erase the four pixels that make up the snowflake. And as this cycles through, that moves the, the snowflake from the top of the screen to the bottom. And of course, it has to start above so that it enters the screen, and it has to go past the bottom uh, so that it exits the screen, thus making uh, an error condition. And that's why I created this plot pixel routine. Uh, that uh, might be a trick you can utilize in your programs to animate other objects across this screen. Uh, then from here, it's pretty much just calling functions. Uh, we're going to uh, learn a couple more commands here. Scroll.clear clears the screen. And then scroll.update updates the screen, as mentioned earlier. So you always have to do something and follow it up with an update. Now these draw lines here, of course, have the update within them. So here we're just going to plot a couple of lines. A horizontal and a vertical line, then this is the one that's going to try to create a gradient uh, display with all those horizontal and vertical lines coming in from the uh, top and right, moving in toward the bottom and left. And you'll see that the brightness or intensity here is decreasing each time, so that it should get pretty dim by the time it gets to the uh, final line. Um, Finally, we're going to add in a scrolling text message, and this is really the, the primary function of this display is to do scrolling messages. Uh, we would start out that routine by clearing the display, updating that we've cleared it, and then we just give it the command scroll.scroll .scroll underscore text, whatever text you want, uh, then this, these two characters here, this sets intensity, uh, or I'm sorry, delay, uh, so that you can slow it down uh, so that it scrolls slower or faster. Um, and, and it's in milliseconds. And I'll add a note here, uh, delay in milliseconds. And uh, you don't want to wander too far from here. Up or down a little bit seems to be fine, but I found that if you go too slow, it doesn't make any sense. Too fast, it zooms by so quick you can't even read it. Uh, but this is a good starting point. And then brightness is really per taste. Um, I got it set at 128. Not sure how I came up with that, but we'll go with it. It might be close to the middle of, of its range of 0 to 255. Um, but this would be the message that'll scroll, and it goes from right to left. Uh, moving into the button example section of the code, we're going to clear the screen, uh, update it again. And uh, that's a leftover here. Um, I'll get rid of that so we don't have to deal with that when you get this code in your computer. Um, what we're going to do is just go into a loop here that'll just keep running. There's nothing on the display at this point. We've cleared it and updated it. Um, but if you press uh, the A button, which over on the Pico scroll is this button here. And then B button, X button, and then finally the Y button. And any time you hit one of those buttons, uh, a few pixels will uh, show up or brighten up right next to the button so that you know which one you hit. Uh, when you hit the Y button, uh, it'll do that, updates it, and then it'll sleep for uh, uh, a second, and then it'll break out of this loop so that we can go on with the rest of the demo. Not any real function in here, just something to show you how you check to see if a button is scrolled and then doing something with that action. Uh, here, we're again clearing the screen, updating it, and then we're going to animate that falling snowflake. And that was all explained up above. 
So we'll go back up to here just momentarily to look at that. And here it is. And we're passing at the X location. Uh, that's the left to right location where we want the center of that snowflake to be. Come back down. And then uh, we scroll another text message. First we clear, update the screen, and say, that's all, folks. Uh, and we're doing it at the same brightness and same speed as we did with the other scrolling message. So let's go ahead. We'll run that again and see if now you get a little better handle on what all that code is doing. I'm also going to do another thing here. Um, I am going to go up, and I've got these two lines uh, in draw X line, draw Y line uh, commented out. What I'm going to do, and that's uh, during testing, I didn't want any more delays. Um, I am going to let that delay a little bit, and I'm going to increase that delay time just a teeny bit. And this will make the display run more animated as, a to, as opposed to immediately drawing the line. And that might make something uh, visually more appealing in one of your projects. So we'll let it run. Now you see how it's kind of drawing those lines more animated, makes it a little more fun. Going through, welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. A little self-promotion there, please forgive me. Now we're at the section where we're going to hit the buttons. I'm just going to cheat. I'll hit X, and that's lighting up. You see the two uh, or four LEDs that lit up. And then when I hit Y, that'll light up and breaks out of the loop so the snowflake can fall. And that ends our demo. So as you can see, it's a really simple little display. It's uh, pretty much limited in what it can do, but with that ability to set pixels, you can create a lot of shapes and so forth that uh, could be more fun for you. That's where your creativity goes into uh, working with this display. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. See you in the next video.